your experience, how, how, what is the percentage of the population that has, is suffering from trauma from the civil war, which I understand has been going on for decades? And, and what, what measures are being taken? I mean, is it a counseling thing or can you? The general estimates are that uh, if one takes a sort of uh, mental health uh, view of things, that the, the severe mental disorders that one finds in any population may increase by 5 to 10 percent in a situation of, uh, of um, disaster or of, of conflict. And that some of the common disorders, the ones that we often associate with war, you know, um, stress responses, depression, and so on, may sometimes actually increase perhaps by 10% or so from, from a base of 10% in a regular population. But if one frames the question differently and says, you know, how many people are str struggling to find, uh, to eke out a, a decent livelihood? Uh, how many people are trying to, um, re having difficulty rebuilding a, self, a sense of identity or of uh, of community. The numbers may be much greater. And of course, these different problems all interact with one another. So it, it is hard to, 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 to quantify it. Um, as far as approaches go, I think you need an, a range of approaches. Um, clearly, providing counseling as the main thrust of intervention is very often not feasible you're talking about very large populations, you're talking about uh, the need to engage with uh, hundreds and thousands of people. Um, and so you would need literally an army of counselors. Um, so therefore, one of the things that you can do is look at ways in which you, you retain specialist services, psychiatrists, psychologists, um, therapists, um, uh, but you also try and bring, in, bring on board people who who have more general skills, people within communities who already play a, a supportive role. I mean, many of us, when we've got problems, don't necessarily go to a professional. We, we rely on family networks, you know, the, 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 the uncle or aunt that you're particularly fond of, you know, a brother or sister who's particularly um, good at helping you solve problems. In times of conflict, in times of displacement, these resources are stretched. Some, some of what we can do is try to take some of the burden off these resources so that they can play the roles that they used to play um, prior to conflict or prior to uh, disaster. Now, when we talk about victims of uh, wars or conflicts, a person like yourself who wants to help the people must work with both camps. Do you have difficulties with the government or with the other side? No. I mean. I think one of the things that has been quite useful is that, um, let me say, this is a tricky question, so I, I'll try to answer it well. Um, in some senses, um, I haven't really experienced this problem um, directly because many colleagues, um, myself included, try to provide these services in a uh, in a way that isn't really politicized, that is linked to basic services that everyone, no matter what political persuasion or on what side, can agree on. Um, so providing services through, through the health structure or through sort of basic social service mechanisms um, usually doesn't present much of a problem. It, it, yes, it is. It can be tricky, but I think that um, if one is clear about what the role one is playing in terms of supporting individuals or maybe supporting groups of people uh, in a um, mutual and, um, and kind of uh, ethical manner, then you really shouldn't have problems with either side, or even if they're more than one side, or more than two sides. Your experience with, uh, with uh, the victims of the Civil War must have come in handy when the 2004 tsunami uh, happened and there were thousands of, of very disturbed uh, citizens affected. Um, I understand you went immediately to work with them. What were the steps taken? Well, in the immediate aftermath, yes, as you said, a lot of people had lost family. Um, many people had 
had lost their homes, their livelihoods. They were living in um, makeshift camps, um, not and weren't really clear about what what was going to happen to them next. Um, so one of the things that um, many of us did was was to try and prepare materials. No one had ever experienced a tsunami before. Um, some quite elderly people in the communities remembered a time when you know something of the sort had taken Hundreds place. Hundreds of years ago. No, you know, <laughs> you know um, stories passed down. But explain to people what happened, what the likelihood of this recurring was. Those sorts of things help people to understand what the threat was. And that immediately gave them a way of managing some of their anxiety about possible recurrence or understanding the meaning of what, what had happened. Um, one of the other things was try to provide information on what, what services existed, uh, where one could go to um, get assistance, what sorts of services were put in place by the, the government, um, where the other camps were, um, how one could try and reunify families, things like that. Um, another thing that we looked at was trying, well, reunifying families are very important. As I said, you know, families and people that you, you're close to are sometimes the best forms of support uh, in a crisis. So uh, helping um, parents find children who perhaps had been separated from them or where children had lost their parents, reuniting with them siblings or with other relatives that they cared about for things that were real priorities at that time. And then, of course, there were things like helping people to go through the, supporting people through the process of identifying um, the dead, um, either through photographs or, uh, or, or, or in hospitals and so on. Um, and just putting in place simple, simple steps whereby people understood what was going to happen, what they might encounter, the state that their loved ones may be in, um, and what the steps would be to confirm that they had, this was the person that they had lost and what sorts of services or things that they might do themselves to help them deal with that impact of that loss. 